Hey, how's everyone doing? I'm seeing some comments in the chat, which I love. So drop in the chat where you're tuning in from today. Uh, I'm Michaela with the Gorgeous Team, and I'm joining from Toronto. So I know usually we have a lot of snow here uh, this time of the year, but no snow this week. So I'm personally very excited for some uh, fresh powder next week. That's what the forecast is saying. All right, let's see some some locations. Okay, San Diego, Miami, San Francisco. Nice. Yes, no snow in Toronto, Adam. I'm also very shocked. December. How is this even happening? LA, wonderful. Okay, Jenny's also from Toronto. Hi, Jenny. Seattle, Belgium. Nice. All the way across the pond. New York City, Ottawa. Okay, a couple more Canadians. Nice. That's really cool. We really do have an audience across the whole continent, actually across the pond too, like from Europe all the way. Very nice. Wonderful. So now that we're a few minutes in, uh, it's time for us to kick things off. So welcome, welcome everyone to our DTCX Tech Masterclass. Last one for 2022. So thank you very much for tuning in. And today we'll be discussing the top five mobile commerce trends to dominate in 2023. So you'll be getting all of the top tier info to create a phenomenal strategy. And we have some amazing speakers joining us today who will be sharing all the knowledge. So speaking of our speakers, we have a brilliant speaker lineup. Uh, we have Elizabeth Cruz, who is the Senior Director of Merchant Success at Dacity. We have Matt Bingham, who is the Head of Tech Partnerships out of Kendo. We also have John Knott, Senior Partnerships Manager at Clyde, and Noah Smo, who's the Senior Tech Partner Manager at Tapcart. So welcome, welcome everyone. And thank you very much for joining us today. Excited to have you here with us. Now, here at DTCX, we have a few best practices to make sure you get the most of uh, your experience. So first and foremost, ask those questions to our speakers. They're all here to help, and you have all of their attention to ask those burning questions. So our uh, ex experts can help you out. Second, give feedback. So if you've used any of the tools that we'll be discussing today or in general, uh, and you love them, let us know why drop a comment in the chat. I'm sure there's plenty of folks joining us today who are exploring some new tools to use uh, for their e-commerce brand. So if one of these tips that our speakers mentioned today has worked really well for you, drop it in the chat. Um, next, we have engage with us. So we love engaging with you. We love responding to your questions. And DTCX is not just webinars and events. Um, even though we do pull off some stellar ones, so stick around. Uh, but we're mainly a community uh, filled with some incredible partners and brands who help one another grow and level up. So join the DTCX community and let's stay connected. So if you're enjoying today or um, a speaker stands out to you or whatever it may be, share your experience or a screenshot from the webinar and make sure to use the hashtag DTCX uh, so you can let us know about it and we can also engage with the post. Wonderful, so that's not all though. Obviously we have the holidays, oops, holidays coming up and in true DTCX fashion, uh, we are making things a little bit more exciting with some prizes to win. Uh, so our speakers today have generously offered up some giveaway prizes that will be rewarded after their presentation. Uh, and let's see what some of the items are. So we have homesick candles from Dacity. Amazing. We have milk bar cookies from Okendo. We have AirPods from Gorgeous. We have Skull Candy headphones from Clyde. And we have a HomePod mini from Tapcart. Uh, and I need to confirm with the events team if I'm eligible for these giveaways because I definitely want to get some of them. Um, so I know what you are thinking. How can I win these prizes? I am glad you're asking. So stay engaged in the chat, uh, ask questions, provide feedback. Let us know if you're having a good time. If you've tried any of these tech solutions, let us know your experience. Uh, so whatever it is, keep that dialogue flowing because the winner is chosen by my colleague, Brittany, 
who's helping bring all speakers on the stage and also helping coordinate everything today. Uh, so thank you, Brittany. And she'll be blindly scrolling through the chat and choosing a winner. So the more engaged you are, the more questions you're asking, the better chance you have of taking home one of those stellar prizes. Amazing. So without further ado, uh, it is time for me to stop sharing screen and I will be welcoming our first amazing speaker to the stage. So joining us from Dacity, we'll have Elizabeth. So come on up on the stage, Elizabeth. And a little bit about her. So Elizabeth leads the Merchant, Merchant Success Organization Audacity, and she's been with them for just over a year. So with six years of experience in retention marketing and omnichannel merchandise, buying and analytics, she now channels having the merchant hat Audacity and helps brand leverage analytics to make data-driven decisions to grow their business. And what's really cool, outside of work, Elizabeth loves to spend time with friends and family, trying fun new restaurants and traveling. And Elizabeth's fun fact is that she does floral, event floral design as a hobby. So not to put you on the spot, welcome, welcome. Hello. 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 Hey, also, Michaela. Hi. Oh. <laughs> I was just gonna ask, I would love to know what your favorite floral design is. I'm definitely very oh curious. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I really like mums. And recently I, uh, I did a wedding for one of my good friends and she wanted like orchid mania. So we did a lot of design with orchids, wow. which was new for me, but yeah, it's a fun, I it's a fun, one. very creative, <laughs> very different than, uh, the data analytics world. <laughs> well, you have to balance the two, right? That sounds yes. really exciting. Well, thanks yes. for joining us and take it away. All right. Thanks so much for the warm intro. I just want to confirm everyone can see my screen. Yes, you're all good. Awesome. Very cool. Well, hi, everyone. As Michaela mentioned, my name is Elizabeth Cruz. I am the Senior Director of Merchant Success at Dacity. I'm really excited to be here today to talk to you about understanding your customer behavior and mobile trends. So what we'll be covering today is how to understand your customer behavior, leveraging first party data and Google Analytics, and then how you can take your findings from that, from that data to go deliver a seamless experience to your prospects and customers. But before we get started, just wanted to give you a little bit of information about Dacity in case you're not familiar. We are a flexible data platform that enables omni-channel brands to become more data-driven so that they can grow faster and more profitability. Essentially, we extract, load, transform, visualize data, and then have a CDP platform as well that we'll talk about a little bit later. But we centralize and normalize data to ultimately help some pretty cool brands grow. Speaking of normalizing data, uh, I would be remiss if I spoke today and didn't bring up GA4 because we all know GA4 is coming. So what this means is a pretty drastic change in reporting for your business from GA3 or Universal Analytics to GA4. And we've been thinking about the business implications of this for a really long time which is why we developed our unified traffic schema. This allows you to analyze GA3 and GA4 data concurrently. So you have a really apples to apples view um, for data that is pretty inherently apples to oranges. And then if you're also selling on Amazon, you can unify this traffic as well for the very first time. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, fears about the migration to GA4, um, my partners on our product team have written a pretty extensive and awesome blog article to kind of help you with best practices and what this transition looks like. I think we'll drop it in the chat. So more on GA4 to come, but it does tie into our presentation as well. So the nuts and bolts of our presentation today is how, how are your customers behaving today? What are the mobile trends and how can we target our customers more specifically? So first you wanna understand what your mobile customer needs. You can leverage our partners like Faring to run post-purchase surveys so you can understand how did the customer hear about you? What was their shopping experience? And then take it, take your analysis a little bit deeper and understand what products did they end up buying from the channels that they say that they're shopping in. Um, really listen to what they're telling us so you can make data-driven decisions from there. Here, for example, we're able to segment survey responses 
to then understand what products are actually being purchased based off of where customers are shopping. So for example, you have a post-purchase survey that says, how did you hear about us? And a customer responds to social media. From there, we can filter on all social media response options to then look at product type purchased. From there, you can dig even further to see, hey, was this their first purchase or a returning purchase? So you can see down to the product level, what people are purchasing for the first time versus coming back and purchasing again and again and again, specific to the mobile channel as well. And a question that we get asked a lot at Dacity specific to mobile, uh, mobile analytics is how are my customers behaving mobile versus desktop? How do I get greater visibility into this? So leveraging Google Analytics, we have here your mobile and desktop site funnels. So you can see from the point a customer enters your site, how many sessions they're spending um, at each part of the funnel. I can compare mobile to desktop and see here, wow, add to cart, there's a massive drop off or a more significant drop off from product view to add to cart in mobile versus desktop. So this indicates, okay, I, there's something happening during this part of the funnel that I need to go pay attention to. Maybe it's a difference in my site merchandising. I now know what products people are looking for a little bit more thanks to my poach post-purchase survey analytics, how can I change this experience? I can dig even further staying filtered just on mobile traffic and say, what channel is mobile traffic coming from? And within these channels, are my customers new visitors or returning visitors? So um, I know it's small text, but new visitors here are in blue, returning are in green. So I can see, wow, I have a lot of new visitors um, trafficking on mobile in paid search and paid social. I know as a marketer that these are very expensive channels. So if I'm getting a lot of traffic there, great. How do I ensure that those turn into conversions? And then ultimately returning customers um, in the long run. Next step is to drill down a layer deeper to understand my mobile conversion rate by channel. So you'll see here, uh, referral and email, not surprising to see these as um, the largest buckets in conversion rate on mobile. But what is a little bit surprising is to see paid social and paid search so low here because they were such a high bucket um, for new traffic. So I want to do everything I can to grow these buckets um, efficiently to, to guarantee the biggest return on investment as I acquire customers in these channels and then get them to purchase subsequently. So now that I've done all of this research, dug into my reporting, done the analytics, done the hard work, I need to go figure out how to deliver a seamless experience so I get the right product in front of the right customers in the right channels at the right time. I can do this leveraging Dacity's tool audiences. This is our CDP product that basically um, we're already extracting all of your data. So now after analyzing it, you can create really targeted segments and then push them back to your marketing tools. So create a segment, push it back into Facebook, Attentive, Klaviyo, TikTok, you name it. Now, what does this actually look like though in practice? We'll go through an example next. So I've already done the research to understand what channels my customers are, are shopping in, what channels they're converting in, what products they're wanting. But I also want to consider what is the lifetime value of these customers um, as they enter through these different channels. So I want to look at my paid social uh, subset of customers and create that segment so I can push it directly to TikTok, for example, so I can create a really specific um, targeted marketing campaign for them to ensure that I continue to have growing gross margin from customers in this channel in the long run. Now, now that I have my target built um, and pushed to, to TikTok audiences, I can put publish a campaign that sends customers to a very targeted landing page that has products specifically merchandised based off of the research that I've done. So I know customers want 
XYZ products or are already converting on these products in this channel from a first time purchase or recurring purchase. So I can send them a really specified targeted landing page that I can feel confident they'll go convert on. And then after that, I can serve targeted ads to identify subsequent purchases that I think they'll purchase as well. So ultimately what this does, pulling it all together is that you have a data-driven approach to getting the right product in front of the right customers in the right channels at the right time and offering them a seamless mobile experience that caters to their needs. And that's it, but I think we have time for Q and A now, if I'm, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Thank you so much. This was wonderful. And yes, we do have some time for questions. Let me just quickly see in the chat if we can pull off a few. Uh, we can start off by answering, what is the top question you get from merchants regarding mobile analytics? Yeah, so one, as I mentioned a bit earlier, is like, how does mobile compare to desktop, which is why it's really important to not just look at site funnel, but then also look at channel conversion and compare the two as well. Um, and really what you're looking for there is what is it costing me to acquire and retain a customer between mobile and desktop so I can understand uh, where there's opportunity for more efficiencies and where there's natural growth, things like that. Perfect. And we have a follow-up question to this from Rob. I saw a lifetime value of a customer. What's the best way to calculate that? Yeah, that's a good question. So there's a couple different rules of thought around lifetime value. At Dacity, personally, we look at um, gross margin, gross margin dollars, and time on books. So from the time you're, uh, you start purchasing and then it kind of extends from there, we actually have a really good knowledge base article on lifetime value and how to report on it that we can probably drop in the chat as well. Um, but we also leverage householding data so you're not duplicating customers. Um, so there's, it's, it's pretty sophisticated, but ultimately you start looking at from the time someone purchased and then that is their entry cohort and then analyzing their gross, the gross margin um, of the cohort as it grows over time. Perfect, thank you, very helpful. Um, and we have one more question. So what are some red flags uh, you can look for in reporting when analyzing mobile traffic? Yeah, so really what you want to look for is drop offs within your funnel. So it's expected that you will have lower uh, conversion in the mobile channel compared to desktop, but you can look to where you're falling off the most in that funnel comparatively. And that suggests there's some sort of UX design maybe that uh, on your site that is like, not jiving with customers purchasing and it can help pinpoint where to go focus your efforts so really what you want to look at is like the difference in delta um, in different parts of your funnel comparing it mobile to desktop amazing thank you and we do have a comment from jess actually yes we do see lower conversion for sure when comparing mobile purchases and and yeah. website. so exactly spot on well thank you so much elizabeth has been wonderful and very, very helpful for 2023. So I'm sure everyone is taking lots of notes and uh, getting ready for their uh, e-commerce strategy. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Good luck, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Um, and the winner of the award, so the homesick candles from Dacity are going to Gus Simpson. So congrats, Gus. And we'll be following up after the webinar uh, with more details so you can be receiving your candles. So congrats. Amazing. So that was great from Elizabeth. Thank you very much, Dacity team, for joining. And up next, we have Okendo. We have Matt Bingham joining us, Head of Technology Partnerships. So come up on stage, Matt. Welcome. And quickly about Matt. So with over 11 years of e-commerce experience, e-commerce partnerships, Matt brings a wealth of knowledge and variety of channels. His experience working with SMB to enterprise merchants bring a holistic approach to uh, digital marketing. So welcome, Matt. Excited okay. to have you on stage here. And 
Thank you for having I me. I didn't want to mention your fun facts, which is awesome. So you've won two state and national D3 titles in water polo while attending Long Beach City College. So you've been playing for over 12 years. Yeah. That's impressive. <laughs> I haven't played in a while, but um, I always drop that fun fact because i uh, proud of that. I love it. <laughs> As you should be. It gets a huge accomplishment. So <laughs> amazing. Well, I'm really happy to have you here with us today. Uh, and without further ado, feel free to share your uh, screen, your yeah. slides, and you can get started. All right. How are we looking? You're great. I can see everything. All right. Cool. Sweet. Well, uh, thank you everyone for attending and thank you, Gorgeous, for hosting us today. And um, I hope that we can uh, give you guys some knowledge to take into 2023. Um, you know, my name, like Michaela says, Matt Bingham, Head of Technology Partnerships. I've been at Okendo for a couple months and I'm going to give you three really good tips that uh, you can enable uh, for your business in the, in the upcoming year. So uh, just a quick little background on Okendo. Uh, we're a customer mar uh, marketing platform that helps leverage reviews and surveys to give you continuous customer insights to drive more revenue in your business. Um, you know, what we really help do with the review collection uh, process is help you display those reviews on site to help with conversions. Uh, but what we really kind of pride ourselves on is collecting a lot of zero party data uh, in the review submission process, also in surveys, so that you can take that data to better create one-to-one -one experiences with your customers. Um, that's why we work with over 7,000 of the fastest growing Shopify brands, including Buck Mason, uh, Groove Life, uh, Florence by Mills. Um, they have stuck with our platform for multiple years. And, um, you know, I think that really goes to show that uh, the Okendo tool can be something that you can enable as well in your business. So um, why don't we jump into the first trend? And that's really maximizing review and survey generation with SMS messaging. Uh, just to kind of like tee this, uh, this trend up is that uh, we all know SMS is like a, a newer channel that's still growing in the e-commerce space, but 99% um, of text messages are open. Everyone has a phone. Everyone opens their uh, SMS sends, whether it's from a company or your friend. Uh, we all read our text messages every single day. The other interesting uh, nugget of information is that 97% of messages are read within 15 minutes. So that really goes to show that this channel um, has a really high engagement rate, but it's also one of the quickest ways that you can uh, interact with your customers, right? Um, and with SMS, what's interesting is that a lot of brands, and I'm sure we're all subscribers to them, uh, can be very promotional heavy. And that's why one of my first tips is to add SMS uh, review request sequences to your, to your SMS strategy. Um, one thing you can do is really create a two-way dialogue with your customers and reviews is one of the best ways to do that. Um, you know, this could be a, a way or a top tip that um, you can add to your SMS to kind of diversify your strategy, right? It's not just very promotional, uh, but this allows you to get in front of customers since they open SMS uh, messages so much to create a better communication channel. Um, we noticed that when you use an SMS review request, um, you do get higher submission rates. Um, you do collect more UGC. And you can also collect more valuable insights. So if you aren't doing a review strategy or if you are asking for reviews from your customers, enable some sort of uh, SMS component and you're going to see higher submission rates. And we saw this with one of our integration partners, Attentive. Uh, we have a very deep integration with them and our client, Groove Life. So they came over to us. Um, they needed to really unlock the power of collecting more reviews, but also collecting more zero party data on that submission. They wanted to know more about, you know, the preferences of their customers, their attributes. Um, and they did this by sending more review requests in their uh, attentive uh, program. And they saw the 29% increase in review generation. They saw that people were completing it at a higher rate. Um, they also did an interesting component of uh, kind of creating a diversified strategy of email and SMS. Um, that way that when they were asking for reviews from a new customer, they were going through multiple channels to kind of help improve the uh, exposure or the ask of the review generation. Um, this is something that you can enable within the Okendo app. Um, you could say, okay, wait, you know, seven days after fulfillment or after delivery send out that email. If they don't uh, you know, give you a review request in the email, 
then you could do the SMS send and uh, vice versa. So really, you know, it's one of the easier ways that you can uh, increase your review rate, but also do uh, a communication channel that your customers are using, right? We mentioned how everyone is uh, opening mess uh, SMS messages. So this could be a good way to get in front of them. We saw the same thing here with Brandon and Electric Marketing. Um, he, his clients, Amora Coffee, is on Shopify Plus. Uh, they took advantage of both the Clavio and Attentive uh, sequences to help uh, increase the review request rate. But they also added a, another layer of using another best-in-class tool, Loyalty Lion, where instead of giving a coupon code for like a review submission, they were actually giving loyalty points. So they were creating better one-to-one -one relationships with their customers. Um, it was communicating on the channel that they prefer. Um, and they saw that people who were submitting reviews actually had a higher chance of like a second time purchase or being a part of the loyalty program. Um, they saw their average order value increase by like 216% or the review completion rate uh, increased by 216%. So it uh, really goes to show that it could be a channel that you can enable in 2023 and it could have an immediate impact on your review collection rate. Um, the same thing goes for like surveys. So we launched Okendo Connect, uh, I think it was September or October, um, but really we launched it because zero party data is really a big buzz term at the moment. Um, but this is information that is actively shared by your consumers. Um, but it's really hard to collect, right? You know, we see that zero party data collection on the review side. Um, you can ask for like customer attributes or product attributes when they're submitting a review. Uh, but we launched a more uh, survey focused, whether it's like post-purchase or on-site. Um, and one of the bigger survey components is using shareable links. So you could take a shareable link, send like a micro survey asking like two to three questions, send them that text. Uh, some examples here is like abandoned cart, you know, why were you leaving the cart? Did you find it as a cheaper price or maybe like a faster shipping option? Uh, again, the zero party data collection, like what's your age range, what's your skin type, just so you know more about your customers, or you can even ask around NPS. So all of these uh, micro surveys or survey links that you can create inside Okendo um, are all customizable to your brand. And you can really take this survey component and try to find better ways to understand who your customers are and what their, what their experience is like with your brand. Um, so the second tip here is really optimizing the review and survey capture for mobile. So um, what's an interesting fact is that like 75% of Okendo reviews and surveys are done for mobile devices um, and really kind of building off of that SMS component. People are on their phones all the time and maybe they don't open email on desktop. So this is really where we're seeing a lot of our customers um, and their customers are submitting on mobile devices higher than other ones. So we at Okendo took it upon ourselves to really optimize that review capture form for mobile. Um, we wanted to make it like a seamless experience where uh, it's really giving you the highest percentage chance of completion. Um, it's all on a single page and a single review capture form and it minimizes the clicks. Um, but I, what I really like about the the mobile version of our review capture form, it really helps you collect more UGC. We notice that when you collect reviews with a photo or like a video, um, you can use that information on your PDP pages. You can use it in your your email or SMS channels. Um, and we've seen that video and, and photos are really a great way to like have a better understanding of your brand early on if I was like a brand new customer. Um, you know, I would say if you are using, uh, you know, a review strategy right now, go back, look at your review capture form, see what, you know, the difference might be if like, if I have to click like six or seven times just to submit a review, you'll notice that the drop off happens um, once people get a little bit of friction in that process. So, you know, go through, go back, take a look at your current provider or your current solution and see if you can add ways to make it more seamless and you'll just see a higher review collection rate. Um, the same thing kind of goes with surveys. You know, you can do the links, um, but we also have the ability to do on-site surveys um, and on mobile, especially, and I think we've all experienced it where we're shopping on mobile, you might have some sort of like, uh, you know, experience come up with like how, what are you purchasing or how did you hear about us? 
but it could be very, very clunky um, on the mobile device. So we've created this experience that, um, you know, 75% of customers don't really like that uh, aspect of being like blocked or blocking your content. You can use contextual targeting to like determine when, where, and who sees it. And then you're collecting this really valuable data without like interrupting the visitor experience. You know, with microsurveys, we say, ask one to two, three questions. Those questions are fulfilled by that customer and then uh, added to the customer profile in the back end. So really make sure if you are doing this strategy um, that you're, you know, showing it at the right time to the right person. Um, and overall with this, you know, on-site display, We've seen that, you know, a, a second in page load speed has like a, a 7% reduction in conversion. So you really want to make sure that you're uh, mobile optimized, you're not overloading your page speed, and you're making sure that you're only using apps that you really, really need. Um, and we have seen this time and time again with Yoda. They're a, a partner of ours. Uh, they do site speed performance and indexes. We have been consistently one of the, the higher ranking review and survey apps that have little to no impact on site speed. It's actually interesting when you go to a site using Okendo and you head to maybe a product page, you'll actually see the review widget load sometimes before the PDP page because we take site speed as a, a really big pillar of what our uh, platform performance is, is for our customers. So um, the last little uh, trend here or, or recommendation moving into 2023 is sending more personalized SMS to kind of cut through the noise. So just to kind of frame this, this uh, strategy, you know, with the iOS update coming up, uh, what's really interesting is like customers can like filter out messages from, um, you know, e-commerce brands or whoever it may be in a separate list. Um, so we uh, wanted to find a way to kind of combat that. And one of the best ways you could do that is through personalization. Personalization is really dependent upon data that you collect from your customers. Um, and really the more data that you collect from a variety of sources, whether it be reviews, surveys, um, email engagement, um, whatever it may be, um, the more you can collect, the more you can create that one-on-one -on -one communication with somebody. And that will help you kind of combat some of these issues when it comes to like privacy iOS updates. Um, that really goes to show, you know, consumers really want that personalized brand experience. They want that as a part of their shopping experience. You know, 10 years ago, um, personalization was kind of a buzzword, but I think consumers now have kind of caught on to what we're doing as e-commerce brands. And they want, it, they want that type of experience where you're giving them maybe recommendations on items. You're kind of helping them shop maybe you're kind of creating more unique experiences because I don't know your brand that well. Maybe I need that type of one-to-one uh, -one communication just so that I can have more trust to make that first purchase. Um, you know, a 5% increase in uh, customer retention can have a huge increase in revenue and customer retention is all about personalization now. So um, you can collect, like I mentioned in the two other trends, uh, zero party data with reviews and surveys. You can send out shareable links to collect customers like preferences or behaviors. Um, in the review process, you can ask about customer attributes like you know, what size clothes they wear, um, also you know, their skin type. Um, and this is all really collected and synced up into the customer profile view inside of Okendo. Um, you can aggregate the data that you collect in reviews and in surveys, it's like a continuous process if you're running multiple campaigns. Again, I mentioned the contextual targeting earlier where you can target certain uh, customers in the buying journey um, and ask them specific questions so that you can collect more data. But really the power of this customer profile now inside of Kendo is that you can actually send that information into the customer profile in Klaviyo, um, Attentive and Postscript. And you could take that information and then segment out your customers to send more personalized one-to-one -one messages. Um, a really, really cool example here is WAG. Um, this, this is a client of ours that uh, sells like dog treats, but um, what they did was on the review process, they were asking about some product attributes here, uh, but they were also asking about the dog's breed, their age, their eating habit. Um, and when that person submitted that information in the review, it was uploaded into the profile they then synced that to Clavio, and they were sending out emails and messages with hyper focus and like relevant product recommendations. They saw the revenue per recipient increase 
They saw that the order rate had increased and even the review request process in, in increased because you're asking some personalized information, which I think a lot of consumers nowadays are willing to give up if you maybe offer them a 10% discount for your next purchase if you give us a review. So um, this could be a, a great strategy to enable in 2023. You can uh, kind of combat a lot of like the Facebook iOS updates and privacy changes with uh, kind of counterbalancing that with more customer data so you can send more personalized messages. And you're going to see a lot more engagement in some of your marketing channels. So um, we do have a special offer, which I will drop into the chat um, for 30 days free. Uh, there's going to be a link. You can also email me, hit me up on LinkedIn. Um, you can mention the demo uh, when on the demo. You can mention this webinar. Uh, we are running this offer to the end of the month. So um, yeah, thank you for all of your time. And I hope some of these tips are something you can enable in the new year. Amazing. That was wonderful. Thank you, Matt, so much. I love the examples and I love that you also broke it down trend by trend and helpful and, and easy to track. So that was great. Yeah. Uh, we're at time, so we won't be able to take any questions uh, online right now. But if you have a second to just go through the chat and uh, reply to a couple, that would be very much appreciated. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. So hello, everyone. It looks like it's my turn to share with all of you what we're expecting to be the top mobile trends um, in 2023. So I'll go ahead and share my screen here. All right. <clears throat> So for starters, hello, my name is Michaela. I'm a senior tech partner and able manager at Gorgeous, and I've been with the team for almost two years now. It's been a fantastic journey and I love working with so many DTC brands. Uh, so starting off with a quick uh, intro of Gorgeous, we are the number one uh, rated help desk for D uh, D2C brands because we are built for e-commerce. And as of Q2 2022, I'm super excited to share that we're also the most downloaded customer support help desk for e-commerce brands. And we're currently servicing over 10,000 merchants of all shapes, sizes, and industries. And you can share, um, you can see here on the screen, some of our amazing customers, such as Steve Madden, Netflix, and Princess Polly, just to name um, a few. So let's kick, th uh, kick things off by chatting about what new trends you can be on the lookout for uh, to provide your customers with an amazing experience. So first off, we'll be looking at responding to customers quickly and finding resolutions to their problems and questions. So especially with the holidays around the corner, we want to maximize on uh, that increased uh, traffic and give that next level experience to make sure that we are retaining these customers, whether they're new or returning to repeat. So let's be real, we're all consumers. And when we reach out to a brand about a question, we want a very fast response that caters to us and shows that our brand cares. Um, so especially if our inquiry is, of course, time sensitive. However, that's unfortunately not um, the normal with a lot of D2C brands because customer service has historically never been looked at um, as a way to increase profits. So brands that have never invested in their CS experience, uh, which I will uh, soon be like sharing with you, is so not the case. And you can definitely turn your uh, support center into a profit center. So. Here we can look at a couple of metrics, uh, the average first response time or time it takes for a brand to uh, just reply to you is 12 hours. Uh, but to actually solve the problem, it's going to take about uh, 17 hours. So that's really not um, going to cut it, especially if your inquiry is time sensitive and there's a good chance that uh, you wouldn't actually order from that brand again because you're angry, you're upset, you don't have a good experience when you were first on that site and you wouldn't be returning for a new order. So taking this one step further, there's also quite a bit of lack of personalization that we've observed, right? So consumers feel like a ticket and they don't feel like they're genuinely connecting with a brand. So consumers we know, and as consumers ourselves, we want to create relationships with the brands we're shopping from. So we want to feel heard and valued. So 
that's why the balance of personalization and automation is key. So 80% of shoppers are more likely to actually buy when a given, when given a, um, personalized experience and 90% of customers rate an immediate response as important or very important when they have a customer service questions. Uh, so as customer expectations rise and the buyers demand, demand more from um, their brands, merchants who don't meet these needs are paying the price, especially those that view um, customer support as simply a cost center. So there's here on the screen two main buckets of unrealized potential where the cost of the gorgeous technology will pay for itself. So those are missed sales opportunities uh, and also in general efficiency gains that you can have from um, high labor and technology costs. So when you think about it, there's two main um, things that brands can control really easily and what we also foresee to be established trends in uh, 2023. So faster first response time and faster resolution time. So first response time doesn't uh, necessarily mean that you have to have an answer for a particular inquiry instantaneously, right? So the moment the customer reaches out to you, but what's really important here is that you have to let um, your customer know that you are looking into the issue. So when they reach out to you, you have to make sure that uh, you let them know that you're working hard to solve the problem for them and to find a solution. So um, ultimately, this will result in a quicker resolution time because you're jumping on the ticket faster, right? Uh, and you're also giving your customer the necessary um, almost reassurance that you do care about their questions. Uh, and customers love this and uh, respect the brand that that does this. As a customer myself, I sure do. I did my uh, fair amount of shopping all around Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and any brand that uh, you know responded to my question faster, obviously it provided a better uh, experience for myself. Uh, so I need to know that the brand I'm buying for is truly acknowledging my question, is looking to help me, uh, and overall, whether it's myself or like other customers, there is a trend that you're more likely to complete a purchase and check out when you've had a positive experience uh, overall. So in fact, the conversion rate for pre-sales chats for SMS replied uh, in fewer than 10 minutes is, 10, uh, is 28%. So the faster your first response time, the more likely your customer is to truly place an order and in general return later um, to place another one. So we truly are talking about generating more sales and whether this is coming from new or returning customers. We all know that happy customers equal returning ones, so more revenue overall. Uh, and in general, just imagine doing this during high volume times, uh, such as you know Black Friday, Cyber Monday that passed or the upcoming holidays. So those 28%, that increase in, in, in um in conversion, it can really snowball into an impressive increase in revenue generated, regardless of whether you're an SMB brand or more on uh, the enterprise side. And let's actually look at um, an example here. So uh, this is one of our current co uh, customers, Roommate, a uh, fantastic brand. They have impressive CX strategy and results. Uh, and you can see here um, that over the same period, uh, last year, they had a first response time of 54 seconds. So that's incredible. That is less than a minute. Uh, and their resolution time was about eight minutes and 15 seconds. So what's amazing is that with these interactions with customers, Brewmate, at the bottom, we can see they were able to generate over $363,000 in about three months. Um, sorry, a year. <laughs> uh, so this is a great example of how uh, faster customer support can help uh, generate more profits. Another e-commerce trend that we'll be seeing in 2023 is with regards to post-purchase uh, behavior. So understanding how customers uh, think and maximizing revenue from there. So uh, the question has been raised several times, is more revenue going to come from net new customers that are newly coming to your store or exploring your product? Or is it more about retaining those existing customers that have made a purchase from you in um, the, past, the past? 
So when a shopper does place an order, uh, that second phase of customer acquisition really begins right there, right? So um, how do I, as a brand, turn these new customers into repeat customers? How do I keep them coming back for more? And if all goes well, of course, that post-purchase um, behavior. So we all know that happy customers means that uh, they are engaging with the marketing campaigns you're pushing as a brand. So whether it's email or SMS or another channel. So being involved from a loyalty perspective with that brand or um, participating uh, in their social channels, referring their friends, that's a wonderful uh, stream of uh, revenue. Uh, so if you do engage with your existing customer base to drive more revenue, it can ultimately have them come back to make repeat purchases uh, with you. Uh, you can help them um, with product recommendations or also achieve this through a generous uh, load program. So you have so much more um, to do with the existing customers in your database. And it's wonderful to see how you can actually choose to interact with them. So uh, you've already worked very hard to um, attract these customers. And now it's important to keep them engaged and proactive with your SMS, your email, and uh, with your social media. So if we look at stats, we see that 21% uh, on average is generally the size of repeat customers in a normal merchant's base. Uh, and the revenue that corresponds to this, so generated from those repeat customers, is about 44%, uh, which Really, into ties, uh, really ties into making the first sale is on the, the finish line, right? So there's much more that um, you can do after that first sale with customers. And it's so important to emphasize on what it is and to identify uh, them, help them identify with uh, your brand and how you continue to keep them engaged um, overall. So you really um, make that customer uh, lifetime value much, much longer and higher. So another rising trend that we see is enabling your customers by allowing them to help themselves. So in 2023, how can we change this to really uh, deflect a lot of tickets so that agents on the brand side can focus their efforts on more complex issues that help to generate a larger number of uh, sales? So here, for example, um, we have... Um, we always look to mitigate some of the like simpler uh, support questions, like where is my order, right? So uh, we're, we're, we are removing that friction. Uh, and at Gorgeous, we are deflecting up to 30% of support volume by providing your customers with self-serve widget options. So again, like empowering self-serve and helping your customers. So again, um, I would so much rather be able to get information about the order myself than having to reach out through different channels to customer support and waiting hours or uh, to get an email back from a support agent. So I'm sure most of you uh, agree with this. So customer want information fast and giving them power uh, to find these answers by themselves, everything they're looking for, there's no better way to do that than with a self-serve um, chat. So customers can track their order, they can um, initiate a return or a cancellation, all of that on their own. And here is on the screen an example of what that self-serve widget looks like. So we're removing frictions by empowering consumers and naturally by removing these frictions, uh, your customers are much more likely to purchase more and place an order. So uh, meaning happy customers and more revenue for your brand. So there are a lot of great trends that uh, we've seen over the past year and we will also very likely continue to see in 2023. And just to name a few, so personalization is key. Uh, and uh, being able to deliver actual personalization at scale to each and every customer that reaches out to you is paving the way for more success. So more, uh, more sales, more revenue. So more from a customer uh, challenge perspective, sometimes customers uh, don't feel like they're um, 
you know, getting very personal experience. They're not being addressed by name. And it really takes away from how loyal they are going to be to your brand or how they're going to resonate with your brand overall. So sometimes you would get these emails being like, hey there, instead of like, hey, Michaela. And it really just feels very automatic, right? So simply creating personalization by integrating with the platform that you're using and um, implementing variables into responses or micro responses that you create within your help desk can help to fire off responses to those customers in an efficient and almost in an automatic automatic form sometimes. So really saving time for your customer support agents. Uh, but also it does help you retain that level of personalization. So name, order number, uh, tracking information, um, shipping information for questions. So the repetitive ones, like where is my order? This is getting directly pulled from your Shopify, BigCommerce, um, Magento store. Um, up next, we also have automation as uh, definitely an emerging trend or current trend, and that's looking to uh, stay on for 2023. So again, we're seeing this more and more with our customers and our base within Gorgeous. So automating responses can generally take place 15 to 25% of the time. Uh, and there's a fine line, of course, um, with over automating certain questions. Uh, and naturally you cannot uh, automate everything. So there are certain things that do require human interaction, um, but the whole point of automating uh, is um, to do this with repetitive and common questions that are coming through. So that way you can um, free up more time for your agents and they can focus on other questions. They can focus on sales. They can focus on the complex questions that might take a little bit more time to resolve. And you don't necessarily and don't necessarily um, require that instantaneous response. So the next trend we'll look at is customer segmentation. So identifying your VIPs. And what do I mean by this? Well, with Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and in general, with the holidays, um, you're going to see some heavy buyers, right? So these like larger orders, uh, we'll call those the VIP customers. They're generally coming to your website and they're spending more than uh, the average customer would spend on your website. So naturally, you want to spend, you want to treat them a bit differently. You want to make sure that you truly are uh, retaining their loyalty. Uh, so this is an immediate opportunity for you to identify those. Um, VIPs to keep them within that uh, customer database and to revisit those conversations more proactively with them down the line. So you want to give them that special attention, that wide glove treatment that allows them to identify and resonate with your brand. Uh, so that when it comes time to uh, make large, pur large purchases like this again, or another like holiday season, another series of sales, um, so they're going to continue coming back to your brand because they know that you spend the time investing and treating them as a VAP and making sure that they have whatever um, it may be. So discounts, um, any kind of uh, exclusive offers or any incentives that you would offer to them to convince them to um, come to your site. Oops. Great. So up next, we have a proactive chat uh, that can help you truly further increase uh, conversion again. So if a shopper is on a website looking for a particular product, but they don't necessarily know what they're going to buy, or for example, they do know what they're going to buy, but they don't know the exact version and what's going to suit them best, uh, they can seek that support right off the bat on the website through the chat. So one example here is with OG. Um, luxury organics. So the product that we're looking at is a lip oil. Uh, and we see there's like a bunch of different um, colors. So a lot of those colors, uh, it may sometimes be confusing. You wouldn't necessarily know as a customer which color will uh, suit you best. So this is where Rachel comes in, right? Like in the chat, uh, we have the chat popping up with a live chat campaign for OG. Uh, it's immediately at the customer's disposal in terms of Rachel being able to help out with the customer, help out the customer um, and help them select the right color. So um, they will be very happy with the purchase. They'll feel like they are being supported. And in general, it's more likely for them to um, 
actually continue with the purchase and check out. So another important trend uh, that we're looking at is also detecting the intent of sales tickets. So understanding what it is that customers are asking for. So we've seen this with a lot of our brands in our portfolio, and we'll be seeing this a lot more in 2023, um, tagging tickets appropriately and responding appropriately. So understanding if you're asking about shipping status or if you're asking about something that actually may not require reply, uh, maybe you need to like auto close those uh, if it's a refund or return or cancellation. Uh, so having these tags in place and identifying what customers are asking about will help brands, will help you automatically just route those pre-sale tickets to the right sales agent so they can handle those to the best of their ability. So uh, we know uh, how CS teams are structured. So there's sales agents, CX agents that know exactly what they're handling and they are experienced in handling those particular set of tickets, right? So it makes sense for them to be handling that particular tag or particular segment of um, customer tickets. So it makes things overall a lot more efficient from a brand perspective when you quickly understand what your um, customer is um, essentially asking for. And up next, we have uh, being omni-channel when it comes to customer engagement. So we definitely see email as is going uh, as one of the most um, common ones, uh, and it being um, the largest stream that customers interact with brands with. But growing channels, uh, like we just discussed, are live chat, SMS, social media. So they continue to grow at an increasing rate, at a greater, uh, at an increasing rate, uh, and so it's important that brands into 2023, they continue to focus their efforts on um, these growing channels uh, and also these new channels that they may consider uh, possibly implementing with their business uh, to make sure that they are tackling customer interactions from um, any sort of uh, different angles and not just from one or um, two. And finally, in 2023, making sure to convert social browsers, so increasing that return on ad spend, either from a pre- or post-purchase perspective. Uh, so again, we're going back to that new customer, net new customer acquisition period versus existing customer retention period. So a customer may come through and um, they may say that they love this brand, uh, they love your brand, they're asking when your next sale is. Uh, and that is an opportunity for you to acquire a new customer. So another thing they might do, they might tag a friend. This will also be another opportunity to acquire a new customer. They may also not know what color uh, to purchase. So the example we just looked at with um, OG Cosmetics. So this is another opportunity to make the suggestion and acquire a new customer. And on the post-purchase site, uh, if they bought an item, but, uh, and they leave a good comment, right? So you want to make sure you're engaging that with that comment. You're liking that comment. You want to keep them uh, coming back for more. Uh, so they have something really good to say about the brand, or they actually have something bad to say about the brand that happens to sometimes, unfortunately. Um, and you want to make sure that, um, you are, uh, you know, treating those like very quickly, you maybe provide them with a discount code or some other incentive to come back for more and really just retain them and keep them in your uh, customer bucket. Great. So with that said, uh, that's all from me for today, folks. I hope you all enjoyed uh, the session just as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. And a special thank you for tuning in. I have a stellar offer for you. So if you haven't tried Gorgeous before, uh, you can grab two months free to redeem this offer, drop a comment in the chat or DM me, or you can also email me. I've shared my uh, email up on the screen. So if you're interested, do let me know. Uh, and before I pass the mic to John, who's our next speaker, I need to share the AirPods winner and the AirPods winner is Chad. So congrats, Chad, Chad Heisler. I will be following up after the webinar. Uh, with more info and you'll be grabbing your AirPods just in time for the holidays. Amazing. So stop sharing screen here and I will be inviting John onto the stage. Hi, John. How are you? Hello. How's it going, Michaela? 
pretty good. good. So just quickly about John. So he's worked in e-commerce for over seven years and he's currently the senior partnerships manager at Clyde. He's previously been in partnership roles at Omnisend and Shipbub. So all gorgeous partners. Love this. Very cool. Uh, <laughs> he's a proud resident of Chicago by the way of Texas. Uh, and John is thrilled to be here today with us in such a good company. So I am really excited to welcome you on stage, John. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And really excited to be here as well. Again, my name is John. Uh, feel free to toss in comments in the chat. I can't see them, but I'm sure other people will chime in and then I'll dive in afterwards as well. Um, but really excited that um, I get to be here today with all of you wonderful folks. So let's dive in. Uh, mobile commerce through the lens of ownership enrichment. I think this is going to 100% build on um, what Matt and what Michaela have, have been talking about. Um, I think this will just reiterate things in a way um, that will hopefully get you thinking about um, the ownership enrichment opportunities that you might have for, for your brand. And if you're asking yourself, what is ownership enrichment? That's a fair question. So ownership enrichment is effectively uh, how Clyde is able to offer our brands the opportunities to offer product protection and product registration to, the, to our clients at scale. So today we'll talk about um, a number of brands that are doing so and talk through a number of opportunities that, um, that the mobile commerce um, wave has to, to present to your brand. Um, we'll talk through leveraging post-purchase SMS campaign to support mobile commerce growth or m-commerce. Um, being able to empower your audience through CX personalization, which Michaela just touched on a decent amount. And consider uh, buy now pay solutions, uh, buy now pay later solutions, and, and the greater um, understanding of how payments is a huge opportunity uh, to increase conversion when it comes to mobile commerce. And we'll hopefully have some times uh, some time for some questions at the end as well. Um, so Clyde works with um, over 350, uh, some of which might look pretty familiar. So Dyson, Hydro, Movado, Tempo, to effectively be able to offer these product ownership experiences, whether it be offering extended warranty at the point of checkout or via post-purchase campaigns with um, via our partners at Attentive or Clavio, um, or being able to uh, import uh, all that valuable uh, registration and product protection data inside of the Gorgeous platform, which we'll talk through in a bit. Um, but we um, are excited to talk through a few of those solutions today, but wanted to make sure that we all understand what extended warranty really is. So effectively, you know, we work with durable goods uh, in the sense that we work with brands that are selling those that have been manufactured. So whether it be um, Time or whether it be Movado, which is a watch company, all the way to Dyson, which is making vacuums. Those are all manufactured um, and they come with what's called an OEM or a limited warranty that is able to, uh, to protect that product against certain things. What's not covered oftentimes is accidental damage and handling, spills, cracks potentially, and it's normally only, um, only about a year that that warranty exists. So by being able to offer extended warranty at the point of checkout and throughout the entire customer journey, you're able to increase average order value uh, pretty substantially, all the way up to almost 20% for some of our customers. Um, you're able to extend that relationship a bit longer, um, and especially in super saturated spaces, you're able to um, have a competitive edge against others by being able to offer this. Obviously, it uh, depends on what the product is that you're selling um, for, for how many years or for what exactly it's going to cover. Um, but it's a, an incredible way, like I mentioned, to increase customer lifetime value a great high profit revenue channel, um, both at the point of purchase and also post purchase. And you're going to build lasting relationships with your customers, which is always something that I know is top of mind, especially with rising customer acquisition costs. So let's dive into our first topic here, which is levering post purchase SMS campaigns to support mobile commerce growth. So according to a recent Clavio research, and it shouldn't be too surprising, nearly all consumers in the US, 96% say that they're willing to receive um, at least one text a week from a brand. I saw some of the discourse in the channel. I know that SMS can be a bit polarizing, but the fact of the matter is, is that the open rate of SMS and the engagement rate that you see is really compelling. So this is an incredible channel for, uh, uh, for e-commerce brands to consider and one that you shouldn't um, bat your eye up. A total, um, and that's over triple what we saw just last year, right? So SMS is becoming a reliable channel 
to support mobile commerce conversations or conversions rather. So when it comes to how uh, these post-purchase campaigns can be seen through a lens of product protection is that there's three examples that I'm going to walk through here that will kind of highlight how we're able to do so. So the, the first text here is sending immediately after the point of purchase, right? But these are those transactional SMS messages that you receive whenever you are opted in to receive a messaging from a brand. They'll let you know, thank you for shopping with us and any other necessary information. This is also an incredible time to say, you just purchased a product with us. Maybe it was, you know, a $200 lamp, maybe it was a you know, $2,900 rowing machine, either or we're going to give you the opportunity to purchase that product protection um, right there in the point of checkout in that order confirmation text. The next two examples I wanted to highlight here um, are text number two, which is sending to non-product uh, non protection purchases sent within 60 calendar days of that purchase, right? So within that eligibility window, saying it's not too late to protect your purchase, for peace of mind, for extended coverage, feel free to learn more or whatever that CTA would like to be. Text number three is looks like your manufacturer's warranty is about to expire, right? This is that creates urgency moment right at the very, right at the buzzer before they're no longer able to purchase that. And we see that having this three, uh, this three SMS series messages um, tends to convert fairly well, right? And, and tends to drive that meaningful incremental revenue that, that you would like to see. And it's just one part of your SMS post-purchase strategy that you most likely already have in place. Moving along to empowering audiences, audiences through customer success personalization. So this is um, a lot of what Michaela talked about. And here's a great snapshot from Gorgeous here in terms of streamlining all of your customer success through one platform, right? Which is what we already know is the power of Gorgeous. But when it comes to um, the personalization, we've seen a pretty substantial shift um, for, com for consumers that now expect personalization as part of, of the e-commerce strategy, right? So it's no longer a nice to have, it's almost an expected, an expected factor. So 98% of, of companies say that personalization increases customer loyalty and 83% of customers are agreeing with that. So I wanted to walk through four tips uh, to providing that personalized experience. Um, first of which is providing more proactive customer service, right? Where can you have relevant information so that customers can easily find this? Could it be in a chat box? Could it be inside of those transactional emails? Could it be in a, a FAQ or some sort of a help um, tab within, uh, within your site? Anytime you can get ahead and proactively answer these sort of customer success moments, the less you have to do and the less uh, resources you're going to have to spend on answering those questions uh, after the fact. Second would be to mention specifics in customer messages, right? Um, when it comes to understanding when my order is going to arrive or what exactly I ordered, making sure that I'm not waiting until I receive the wrong item um, to then you know, open up a ticket, but being able to say, oh, I realized that I maybe purchased the wrong size or the wrong color and being able to solve that quicker, maybe even before it goes out of the fulfillment center. Um, specificity is key. It helps you have that one-to-one -one relationship with the customer. It helps to prevent um, you know, long lead time for getting a resolution um, in place. Third point here is using customer data to inform support. Um, I, I think Michaela did a great job of highlighting all of the data points that are available to folks that are using Gorgeous. I think this is true from anyone, right? The more data you have from all of your different disparate platforms um, in one platform, the quicker you're able to solve tickets, the more informed you are about, um, about their, their loyalty status, like in this example right here. Um, you, you can see if they're a VIP customer or not, what they've purchased, how they've engaged. So having all the customer data in one, uh, in one spot um, it's just going to lead to an overall better customer experience. And lastly, is unifying your conversations into one platform, which is the entire power of Gorgeous as is. But highlighting this third point here, using customer data to inform support. Through the Clyde Gorgeous integration, we're able to actually connect all of the claims experience or the entire product ownership experience inside of the Gorgeous platform. Um, so working together, we're able to create that seamless customer experience, importing all of the data surrounding product protection, who's purchased product protection plans, who's eligible to, to purchase product protection plans that maybe has not, who's, um, who's um, coming in via a registration channel, and so on and so forth. Um, you're also able to offer product protection to those that have not purchased it yet. So again, uh, to Michaela's point, turning a customer success moment into an opportunity to actually monetize that customer success moment. So turning your, what would be perceived as a cost center into you know, a real revenue driver. Being able to close tickets faster by surfacing that relevant order and warranty details 
And again, improving overall customer experience, truly that better together story when you're able to, to leverage Clyde and Gorgeous together. And just how that looks inside of the platform here. So I have all of my relevant data in terms of how many days left I have to purchase that product protection. And also that there's currently no contract sale on, on, the, on the ticket itself. So again, if I'm, using, if I'm using Gorgeous, having everything in one window in a world where we have 400 tabs open on our computer, um, that's going to keep me in one track of mind, keep me focused on how I can get the most out of this customer success moment um, and being able to potentially sell that product protection plan to that customer as well. All right, considering buy now, pay later solutions. So I think all of us are very familiar with these at this point, Affirm, Klarna, Afterpay, Bread. There's probably you know one of the more saturated spaces in our MarTech landscape. And that's saying something because I think we're all in fairly saturated spaces. But orders taking advantage of interest-free installment plans jumped 78% on Black Friday of this year over a week before, right? I think we're all fairly familiar, um, or some of us more than others, with the you know impending recession, right? There's a lot of heat right now. Interest rates are, are getting high. Wallets are getting squeezed more than they have been in the past. And, and the consumers are looking for ways that they can purchase those bigger ticket items without having to stretch their wallet or without having to make that that purchase up front. And what's more is that we're seeing that um, that, that Gen Z, which is obviously the, the incoming um, larger purchasing power um, segment, um, is, is really, really fond of these buy now, pay later solutions. They're interest free, and we're seeing that the, the rate of folks using them has gone up pretty substantially. Through the um, Affirm and Clyde integration, we're able to actually offer product and protection all in one fell swoop. If you're not familiar, Plunge is an incredible customer of ours they sell, uh, they sell like cool dunking tubs. They're about $2,500 or more. Um, and they keep, um, there's, there's a number of health benefits that I won't get into, but it's a, it's a larger purchase, right? And so if you're making that, that $2,700 purchase, um, you know, you might want to consider ways that you can protect that purchase, right? If there's a, a one-year manufacturer warranty, if I'm, if I'm, you know, doing up that much money, maybe I'm a bit more hesitant to buying that in the first place. Maybe I'll need to consider a buy now, pay later solution in the first place. But by being able to offer product protection and the product uh, via a firm, we've seen that the, the, the attachment rate goes up pretty substantially as well as we'll see in our case study in the next example here. So protecting and paying in one fell swoop, increasing the product protection attachment rate, effectively more, more money in your wallet, increasing that average order value, increasing conversions for those higher price point products with lower risk through a firm, and obviously building those lasting relationships with customers. At the end of the day, if I'm purchasing via buy now, pay later, that means I have more touch points. I have more times to think about that brand over the over the you know the the four easy payments that I'm going to be making. That's four more times than I would maybe be considering the brand before. So a kind of interesting point there is that you know by offering these sort of buy now pay later solutions, even though you might not see the money up front, um, you do get four more instances where the consumers are thinking about your brand, right? Thinking about reordering, thinking about Christmas gifts that they have coming up. So when it comes to mobile. Buy now, pay later is an excellent solution um, to make sure that you're you're uh, converting those those customers. And here's a quick case study on the buy now, pay later front. Uh, Lightboxer is a connected fitness customer of ours. They sell an upright uh, boxing machine, so it's effectively a, a, a boxer you can um, you can mount on the wall, or there's a standalone, and you can get all of your pent up uh, anxiety and stress out on the Lightboxer. Um, so they joined with us in 2022, and since then they've seen attachment rates increase by. 51% compared to the previous six months by turning on that Affirm integration. So just an excellent use case for how being able to offer these buy now, pay later solutions can not only increase the amount of folks that are converting, but also converting on these upsell opportunities like product protection or like any other cross-seller upsell opportunities that you might have as well. Um, uh, from, from Daniel Snow, who I'm sure some folks are very familiar with on Snow Agency, he works with this brand. He said the seamless integration between Clyde and the firm reduces friction by offering customers flexible financing paired with the peace of mind that their investment will be protected. Um, that's all that I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed um, us walking through a few of those uh, points there. Wanted to offer a, uh, a special offer for our gorgeous customers here today. Uh, so for those that sign up before the end of the year will actually receive six months free of product registration, so long as they sign up for our extended warranty product. So I wanted to highlight, um, this is an example here of our registration flow with our joint customer uh, with, with Gorgeous Tushy. 
um, and you're able to effectively not only register customers that are offer, that are buying from you on third parties like Amazon or Walmart, but during the registration product, also sell them product protection as well. So a great use case for how that one-two punch can really drive folks back into the e-commerce funnel and also being able to drive more customer lifetime value from them as well. So feel free to reach out uh, to me via this email address if you're interested. And obviously I can always um, be, be reached out to on LinkedIn as well if you scan this QR code right here. So really appreciate it. I'm not sure if we have time for questions, but I'm sure Michaela will let me know. Thank you, John, so much. That was, that was amazing. I love the examples. And, you know, looking at the Clyde like colors, it just always cheers me up. I love the orange, <laughs> love the pink. So it's always very cute. That. Uh, we have time for one quick question. Um, and that is, how are you monetizing after the point of purchase today? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think uh, I'm sure this is for the audience as much as it's for me as well. But I'll, I'll give you some insight for us. So, you know, we've, we've really found that, you know, most customers or most brands rather do have a post-purchase strategy already in place, right? It's probably multi-channel, it's email plus SMS. Um, and, and the way that we're currently offering or allowing folks to, to monetize that post-purchase strategy is being able to strategically um, drive product protection revenue via email and via SMS campaigns. We have um, plenty of our customers, I think about 30 customers today that, 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 are, that are doing so. And they're driving a pretty meaningful around, amount of revenue by knowing when the inflection points are where it's best to ask. And again, it's those three examples that I shared. It's at the point of purchase during that order confirmation, uh, email or SMS. It's uh, letting them know how many days they have to consider product protection. And then it's also right before the product protection that they currently have their OEM, their limited warranty is about to expire. Those are the three inflection points we've seen it worked, uh, work best. Um, and we'll continue to see how, how brands iterate on those three. Amazing. Thank you so much. We're up on time, but there's a couple more questions in the chat. If you have a second to uh, respond to them, that'll be great. And thank you very much for joining today. It was a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so much, Michaela. Thank you. Amazing. Up next, we have Noah Small, who is a senior technology partner manager at Tapcart. And Noah, he has um, he was the second partnerships hire at Bolt, where he worked for the last three years and recently joined Tapcart to lead their tech partner program. Uh, and Noah's fun fact is that he is the youngest of five siblings and an uncle to 13 nephews and nieces. Wow, you must be buying a lot of gifts for the holidays, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of gifts, and they all have to be good. One can't be like too much better than the other, or else I get in big trouble. Well, you have to be the favorite uncle, right? Like it's that, that's the goal. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's pretty hard when there's you know four other siblings to compete with, but I, I think I am. <laughs> I think I am. If there was a survey that was put out, I think I'd win. Love to hear it. It's almost like you work <laughs> in e-commerce, right? Like, and you know exactly. what to shop. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining. Stage is yours and take it away. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Michaela. Thank you to the gorgeous team. I think you guys always do an amazing job putting this together. Always learn a ton from uh, a lot of our partners and potential partners that we that we have over at Tapcart. So thank you guys for putting this together. Uh, today, I'm going to walk you guys through a um, little intro, um, why mobile, talk about push notifications, um, and then a, a new feature that we've, we've rolled out at Tapcart called App Clips. Um, jumping right in, uh, why mobile? Um, you know, the trend towards mobile commerce are, are clear. If you're like me, you're at the end of the week uh, and you see your phone, that like uh, message that Apple sends you, how much time you spent on your phone. Uh, you, you're kind of uh, terrified by how much time we spend on our phone. And uh, it, it's not simply just on our phone, but it's also on apps as well. And if you think about it, um, you know, in our day and age, if we want to know where our friends are at, we're going to Instagram. If we want to go on a date, we go on a dating app. If you want food, you go to Grubhub. Uh, we're spending more times on apps than we ever have before. And the same thing applies to uh, shopping on apps as well. Uh, that's why one of the first questions that we ask customers is what percent of your e-commerce traffic comes from a mobile device? And on average, um, we see about 79% of e-commerce traffic coming from a mobile device. This is actually, this is, we've seen this number a lot higher. Sometimes it's, it's 85, 90, 95%. 
but usually the next question we ask them is, is really what's your rate of conversion online on mobile? And it's usually a lot lower. Um, and in its simplest form, you know, the web browser, the mobile web browser experience is suboptimal to the mobile app experience. It's, it's harder to navigate. Uh, it's not as quick. Uh, it's a clunky checkout, frequent card abandonment. And overall, the UX and UI component are just not as seamless as users have come to expect. Um, this is where um, I want to talk. This is where push notification comes in, and I want to talk to you guys a little bit about what push notifications are. Um, they are an owned marketing channel, um, and what I mean by that is push notifications are an own marketing channel as opposed to Facebook and Instagram, and they're an alternative to Facebook and Instagram. So. Um, let me take a step back just to explain what own marketing is. Own marketing is anywhere that you have subscribers, but not necessarily followers. So you might have followers on Instagram, but who, who owns that audience? Well, Facebook owns that audience and controls who sees what and when they see it. Um, and when you put something on Instagram, you're fundamentally creating something that Facebook is making money off of. And really, as a rule, you want to take as much ownership over your sales and marketing end to end and not rely on these tech giants to distribute your messages. Unlike followers, when you have subscribers, and think of this as someone who has provided you their email and phone number, downloaded your app, and opted into push notifications and said, I want to hear from this brand. 100% um, of the people that have opted into push notifications will actually see them. As you see here with Facebook and Instagram, organic reach is very, very minimal, and it's just getting lower. Um, and the cost of, of paid social has gotten has two or three X in the last two years. I saw a joke on LinkedIn that I thought was pretty good. Uh, don't normally get my jokes from there, but uh, marketing joke of the day. I made a joke about organic reach on Facebook. Nobody got it. Um, it's, I thought it was pretty witty. There's a little truth in every joke. And uh, truth here being that no one's actually seeing um, what you're putting out there. I want to talk about push notifications as an owned marketing channel. Um, and some of the other own marketing channels that you guys might be more familiar with, like email and SMS. And in no way do we see um, pushes as, as simply an alternative to email and SMS, that we, we definitely see them as complementing an email and SMS strategy. And the majority of our merchants that we work with are already utilizing email and SMS. But with email, you know, it scales really well. Um, but it doesn't always have the best rate of engagement, right? It's totally free. But for me, like I have a promotions tab, I end up a lot of my emails go there. Um, the open rate is not nearly as high. Um, with SMS, you get a much, much better en engagement, but it's not as scalable because it costs money. With push notifications, you're really getting the best of both worlds because it's an own marketing channel, just like email and SMS. Um, but it's getting a very, very high level of engagement. And I'm going to show you what it looks like in just a second. Um, and you can send as many of them as you want for free. Um, so you're really connecting with your customers in a whole new way. You can send along an unlimited number of push notifications um, with Klaviyo right along with your emails and SMS. I want to show you guys what a push notification looks like. So note, this is a push notification for one of our merchants, um, Princess Polly. Um, just take note um, how content rich it is. It's dynamic. It's taking up half the screen. Um, there are a lot of different things that you can do um, with push notifications. Some of our top performing push flows are abandoned cart, welcome series, back in stock. Uh, I, I, these are really, really potent. There are many, many other ways that you can utilize push notifications. Um, I know for myself, um, I'm the king of abandoned carts. Uh, I'm, I'm often um, shopping on my phone, put a bunch of items in the cart, kind of forget about it. Um, and then I'm waiting in line for coffee or somewhere and, and I get that push notification right to my phone. And it really does bring me back to the app a lot. So just uh, in summary, uh, you really want your mobile app uh, experience to be as similar um, to your desktop experience. Um, so with a mobile app, you're gonna get rapid load times. The navigation is gonna be way easier. There's not gonna be latent uh, issues, latency issues, totally clean page layout, and the checkout experience is incredibly seamless and easy. So uh, there's two really main value propositions to having an app. Um, the first one is something that I, I've already mentioned. It's a mobile experience designed for shoppers. So you're getting all of those, those items like uh, it's easier to navigate. It's much quicker that we mentioned before. And because of that, we see three times higher mobile conversion than we do uh, on an app than we do on a mobile desktop. Um, 
Second value proposition is it's an own marketing channel built for engagement. And with, um, this is really where push notifications comes in with push notifications, you're being driven back to the app. You're able to engage with your audience uh, in a much more dynamic and constant way. We're seeing a two to three X in lift in, in session frequency, which overall leads to a two and a half X um, lift in customer lifetime value. I want to talk to you guys a little bit uh, about app clips. This is uh, a really exciting feature um, that we've recently rolled out. Uh, I, that I think uh, is definitely going places. Um, one of the challenges of downloading an app is, is just, you know, transparently the friction that it takes the consumer to actually download the app. Um, this is where App Clips comes in. App Clips is a miniature version of an app that's focused on a specific task and designed to appear as soon as you need it. So it, think of it, it of, of like a streamed app. So just like when you watch a movie on Netflix, you're not downloading the movie, app clips are streamed apps that you can use without downloading anything. So imagine you're at a store, you're scanning a QR code, uh, you see a jacket that you like, um, press on the item, go to Apple Pay, add to cart, excuse me, go to Apple Pay, pay for your item. Within 15 seconds, you, you've actually purchased um, the product. And you have not, again, you have not downloaded the app. And App Clips is also a great way to drive downloads to the app for folks who might not be as committed to your brand. So um, notice here that in this App Clip, um, you have an offer to receive 20% off. Uh, tap here to receive a dis discount that you can use in the app. So they're actually using the App Clip to drive more um, traffic to the app. And we've seen a lot of success that way. Uh, app Clips is really, it's, it's very new. Uh, it's something that was only released by Apple. Um, two years ago, um, a year and a half ago. So it's it's really, um, there are really endless examples of the different ways that this can be used. Um, some ways that, that I've seen out in the open are, you know, there could be a long line at a store and you put an NFC tag on your product um, and you just walk out the store. Um, you can put an NFC code on a bag of coffee and on the back of it, it says, if you're running low on coffee, tag your iPhone here. So you tap your phone and purchase it with Apple Pay and within seconds it has been purchased. Um, something else, uh, another really cool way that I've seen app clips being used is at a live event. So someone is presenting a new product and you can have a large QR code on the screen behind them and offer an app clip for a limited discounted price of the product. Um, so again, this is really, it's, it's kind of the wild, wild west of app clips. It's a very exciting feature, something where we, we've just started rolling out um, with some of our merchants and you'll probably see a lot more of uh, if you follow TapCart. So I'm going to stop there. Um, we're also offering an exclusive webinar discount, um, two months free plus free app design. Uh, if you have any questions at all, um, please reach out uh, to me, Noah at tapcart.co. Super happy to connect here or on LinkedIn. If you want the exclusive discount, um, please reach out directly to me. Um, but uh, otherwise, thank you so much to everyone and to the gorgeous team for organizing this. And yeah, great to talk to you all. Thank you so much, Noah. This was amazing. Uh, we have time for one question, if that's okay. Uh, so what are the main reasons merchants should build an app? Yeah, uh, I would say if they're, if th one of the main reasons is if they have a lot of um, mobile traffic that's happening, um, you know, not on their website, but actually happening on mobile, their, their mobile experience is really suboptimal. And there's a lot more they could do to engage and give their customers experience uh, you know, a, a give their customers a really awesome experience. Uh, I think that you'll see very quickly once you, you know, see one of our apps out in the open, like the experience on the app is going to be a lot more seamless, quicker. Um, it just lends itself so much more to making a purchase and, and having, enjoying the shopping experience than the mobile desktop experience. 100%. I've used the Princess Polly app that you guys built, and it's definitely much faster when you're using the app versus like Heck going yeah. through the mobile version and all of that. So definitely. fully agree with you on that. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining. And I'll send you a message on Slack because I definitely want to know what gifts you're buying your your nephews. I need some, yeah. <laughs> some yeah. recommendations as well. Uh, yeah. And the winner for the HomePod Mini is Yannick Wiggers. So congrats, Yannick. Uh, and we'll be following up Congrats. so you can get your nice. uh, award. Amazing. Thank you, Noah, so much. Thank you.
And that's all for today. Thank you all for joining us today. It was a pleasure to be your host. And I hope everyone has a lovely, lovely weekend. And that in general, you found today's session very helpful and very insightful. So join our GTCX community to stay up to date on upcoming events. This was the last webinar for 2022, but we'll be back with lots of amazing topics in 2023. And see you all soon. Have a great December. <laughs> Bye.